<clears throat> okay, I wanted to quickly, this is the uh, U-Boat Leader Tactical Expansion. I uh, just wanted to go over all the components and talk about uh, what, what would be included in it. Um, so I sent the email talking about the components, so here's everything. So this is just a standard setup where, again, you would have uh, a U-Boat executing a campaign. So here's you know, in a happy time. Uh, so the U-Boat, um, now this is the U-Boat uh, crew status. So the U-Boat has a set of crew uh, of eight crew members that are part of the crew, and those crew members can have different experience levels. For example, minus two is a trained, minus, or I'm sorry, minus one is trained, minus two would be a green crew member. Um, and you could have experienced, plus one would be a veteran, and a plus two would be an ace crew member. So the crew members could have different levels of experience, and you use XP earned from sinking ships to uh, level up on the crew. And you can also spend XP on specific crew skills. So in this case, commander is uh, 12 XP on infiltrator, 10 XP on a surface attack plus one. Uh, first watch officer here, uh, so the escort surface attack minus one. So when he's on the bridge, uh, escorts attack at a, with a minus one modifier. So the crew have, has levels and they can also have skills. Uh, the U-boat also can have different types of equipment that can be uh, that you roll every uh, couple of patrols to see uh, what equipment is available. So in this case, there's an Alberic, which is a uh, rubber coating on the U-boat, which reduces the escort detection. Uh, some of the other things, that equipment, a wagtail, which is a hovercraft over top for contact, bold canisters for depth charge, uh, getting uh, slipping away from depth charges, flat gun upgrades, hydrophone upgrades, and a METOX, which is an aircraft detector. Um, the crew, when they're on the surface, for example, this is uh, simulating a tactical encounter, nighttime encounter, the U-boat's on the surface here. So you can put the, uh, the commander on the surface along with the first watch officer who's basically controls firing the surface, Tor uh, torpedoes when on the surface. Um, if we were firing the flat guns or the main gun, then the second watch officer would be on board. Uh, and they would be up on the bridge on the surface U-boat. Um, if an escort attacks the surface U-boat, they can be wounded. Um, so you have to roll to see if they get wounded, and if they're wounded, they have a minus two uh, modifier on there. And if they get wounded again, then they're and they're killed. Uh, for attacking aircraft, there's a couple of different types of aircraft. Early on, it's the uh, Swordfish and Sunderland in the earlier campaigns, and in the later campaigns, you have the Liberator and the Hudson. So you would put the uh, you know, the aircraft just attacking in the aircraft box, and you might have the second watch officer uh, managing the crew that's firing the flak guns. So. Uh, then you would roll the die modifier here minus one if if they do decide to fire the flat gun at the swordfish. Um, in this case, you get a plus two flat gun modifier. And then uh, if the aircraft, or if they don't damage or, or um, knock out the aircraft, then they can perform a depth charge attack on the on the surface U boat. And those are the attack modifiers: five, seven, nine, five light damage or yellow chit pull. Seven is a red ship pull, and nine means that the uh, U boat is sunk. Uh, also, after 1941, uh, optional, optionally, you can have an Enigma status where uh, either the Enigma is secure, and, and after every patrol, you would roll to see if uh, the code gets cracked, and then if it does, then you have a minus two modifier on all contact rolls until. After each patrol, you roll an 8, 9, or 10, then it goes back to secure. There's also a war command track, so that as U-Boat executes its mission, if it doesn't meet the minimum tonnage requirements specified in the mission card or in the mission table, then the uh, mission track, the commander goes down on the mission track, and you can see that they start have negative modifiers as they move down, and if they continue to do poorly, then they end up losing the game. Uh, those modifiers are used for rolling when uh, for rolling for U-boat equipment as well as coordinating uh, U-boats for convoy attacks 
and if you start exceeding the uh, maximum tonnage then you would move up the boat track until you eventually would win win that uh, tactical display so you can see here that we have a generic u-boats uh, type 2s bcd type 7s abc uh, and d and then the type 9s abc and d so you put the appropriate U-boat card here. Uh, there's the stress values, so the U-boat crew can still get stressed as part of the uh, damage chit draw. You can see here that this U-boat has an oil leak, which causes a plus one detection roll, as well as some bullet holes from a surface escort ship. I uh, keep track of uh, mission, uh, what mission turn you're on, fuel, depth. Uh, damage obviously uh, guns current battery charge uh, and you can have up to four different types of torpedoes that you have stored uh, this is the number of patrols that you perform for a particular campaign and then uh, these are the, t the torpedoes that that are loaded in the uh, torpedo tubes and can be fired and you, again you would load specific types of torpedoes <clears throat> uh, so the goal of the game is you start off either as a uh, as a uh, commander on a small U-boat, like a Type 2, B or C, and you execute missions, and as you earn experience points, you would roll and sink more tonnage. You would, uh, every four patrols, you would roll to try to upgrade your U-boat from the earlier Type 2s up to maybe a Type 7 to a Type 9, and maybe to the Type uh, 21. So you can decide to perform for example four patrols or, or eight patrols per campaign through all the campaigns so here's the two new ones the arctic and the and uh, africa and indian ocean so you would go through those patrols earn xp increase your crew experience levels purchase crew skills uh, you would get equipment on your U-boat and as you transition to new U-boats you have to roll for your crew to see which ones transfer to the new U-boat and some of them might not and so then you would have to fill them with with uh, green crew members again and uh, roll them up through the ranks uh, or you can decide to play a U-boat ace in this case Otto Kretschmer so a short biography and it just shows the war campaign so if, if you're Otto you would perform 10 patrols with your Type 2B in the Battle Begins campaign. And then you would perform 8 patrols in the Happy Time campaign with a Type 7B. Uh, and then you would have certain com command skills and victory conditions associated with, with that campaign. Um, so... Uh, so as I mentioned, there's different tactical displays. The blank one for like the war campaigns. Uh, here's the river tactical display that simulates a river attack. Uh, the attack, the coast attack display, where you have to go from the right to the left to attack ships through some es patrolling escorts. Uh, the port tactical display, where you can either do mine lay mines at the mine location, or you would go in th to the port and attempt to sink uh, naval ships that are docked inside the port, kind of like uh, what Preen did. Uh, and then, you know, there's some nighttime, two nighttime different tactical displays, and then the daytime displays, uh, two, two tactical displays for that. So uh, you could see here, for example, uh, escorts are patrolling along the patrol path, uh, which they would do until... Um, you know, the U-boat's been either attacks a ship and then there's a sighting marker placed or, or the U-boat's detected. And then uh, the U-boats would start closing in on that, on that particular position. It's also different conditions. Uh, so in this case, uh, day-night would be a nighttime attack. Weather's calm. Crew, escort crew is alert. And uh, the merchant ships, in this case, they would scatter if once an attack starts so they can start moving around in different directions on the tactical display uh, in order to scatter. Uh, there's also the reference cards. So here's the, uh, the campaign mission charts. So you roll a die to see which mission you're going to perform and how many patrols for that mission as well as the, uh, the tonnage required. So for this case, yeah, if you get sink less than 39 
tons of shipping, you have a minus two VB penalty, plus you would uh, go down on the working man track by one. And if you sink over 58 tons of shipping, you get plus three VB P bonus, and you would move uh, up on the war command track. So there's uh, missions for all six uh, campaigns. And then there's uh, reference cards that have the tables, uh, and they would be uh, determined based on you know, the game steps. So here's a summary of the game step reference card, a two-pager. Uh, and on this card, you can see there's references to the tables that are applicable for that step. So you would go to the appropriate uh, cards, find the table, uh, you know, maybe roll your dice with, and have, with, apply the appropriate die modifiers for that. So there's a set of escort charts that control the escort, and then a set of U-boat charts that are used to um, determine the outcomes of things like aircraft attacks and uh, boat torpedo attacks and also some crew charts so uh, this shows you know the die modifiers and the XP required to advance your crew to the next level uh, you know if somebody if one of the crew is wounded while the submerged determine which which crew member gets wounded uh, surface roll for each surface crew um, you know when there's an escort attack and then uh, every after every patrol, you would roll a die, and if you roll a 10, then one crew member um, leaves the, the U-boat or gets transferred to another location, so you would roll to see which crew member leaves. If you get a new ship, you would roll to see, um, you know, which crew member is transferred as a new ship and which ones don't. So those types of things uh, are in the charts. So that's basically the components. Um, so they have the reference cards, the tactical displays, uh, two new campaigns, uh, the U-boat status card, a crew status card, uh, the U-boat status card, and then um, a new set of, of counters, uh, as well as uh, the convoy cards that are used to define the uh, tactical encounters that you would use on the tactical display. Uh, so that's, that's everything that's in the tactical expansion.